So, in the future, self-driving cars or semi-self-driving cars could save energy in a way that hasn't been widely discussed, in my opinion. And that is by using something called slipstream. So, I'll explain it. This is already used by racers and people. But basically, when you're behind an object that's moving fast, that object creates a low pressure zone of air behind it. It pushes some of the air away. Besides that, some of the air gets more spread out more easily without going more to the sides. This means that an object nearby behind it, um, the other object moving, feels less air friction. And here's just a bunch of pictures of it. Now, how good would it be? Well, this is highly dependent on driving style and so many other factors. So we really can't make a big say about how good it'll be. But if you are driving behind a truck that is driving 75 miles per hour, they say, in this one test here, you can look at how much drag is reduced at different distances behind the truck. Now, the bigger the thing in front, the more energy it uses, but the less energy, so that's the biggest cost, but the less it, um, the more, but the better it's for the thing behind it, because it pushes out more and more air away. And that's also the more worse the thing in front of it is, the more it helps the thing behind it, in kind of a way. So you have to look at different ways, and so a truck with a car behind it is kind of one of the best scenarios. And this stream is more effective at the faster you go, because the faster you go, the more air you push out of the way, and the more also air resistance is a big deal. Friction between the road is about constant, and with your wheels, it slightly goes up and down depending on speed. It's not linear, and it can also go up and down. It depends on a lot of things. But air resistance, air friction actually goes up with a square speed. So air resistance at five miles per hour compared to 25 miles per hour, which is, it, if you compare five miles per hour to 25 miles per hour, which is a five times increased speed, the air resistance actually increases by 25 times. So it's, and so it's a big deal, saving. So you can see that for a car driving behind, an average car driving behind a big giant vehicle, if it's driving really close five feet, which is way too close, it can save about one third the energy from, from aerodynamic resistance. Now, looking at that, about eight to 12% of the energy loss of a car moving is due to wind resistance in a car powered by motors, sorry, by gasoline. A gasoline is a lot less efficient than everything else. So a gasoline motor is so much less efficient. It also has much more moving parts. So that percentage is even higher percentage rise because everything else is lower in an electric car. But if we compare it to the other main resistance that's friction, rolling resistance, which is, has to do with the tires against the road, that's 4 to 7%. So rolling resistance is actually a little less than wind resistance. So it's really helping the most significant part of resistance in most cars that's not doing with the engines. The problem with this is that it is very, very unsafe driving. So either we have to develop better AI drivers or an AI system that helps people drive, or what we could do to really help this is have car, um, cars that hits together or stuff that hits together behind your car to make it more efficient. So you can drive a small car, but if you want to carry a bunch of things, you can't make put the hits against your car to hit to carry more things on with you on the road, so your car becomes bigger. And I'm saying very much like a trail tractor. And therefore, you don't have to drive two cars. You drive one car, and then total air resistance will be a lot lower. This will be way more efficient also in streets if we could have cars with a module, like you could take out some seats. Well, thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. 
it really helps the channel out. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers in a year and four thousand watch hours, which is really hard. With your help, I think can do it. Of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, comments, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Again, thank you very much. Goodbye.